Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I don't know about you, but I love Christmas. I really, really love Christmas. As a matter of fact, I think every single one of us are always trying to look for the feeling of Christmas, right? I love that jam. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, right? But it doesn't look like Christmas until you start making it look like Christmas. For example, right after Thanksgiving, I went and bought my Christmas tree. And, uh, and then as soon as I got done decorating it, man, I was like, ah, it's starting to feel like Christmas now, right? And then you just go back to your hustle and bustle. But um, I, I know that every single one of us had a beginning. Everybody say beginning. beginning. When you started having your own celebration uh, on Christmas with your, your, your family, your children, whatever. Uh, the first Christmas tree you bought, you went out and you, you purchased ornaments. You bought things that were sentimental to you. And then you kept them. You know, like I still have stuff from my kids when they were little and they used to draw these little cute things for Christmas and then they'd cut them out and then we'd hang them on the tree. And then every year that we bought a tree, the kids would go grab their stuff from that box and bring them back up and they were said, we never threw them away. Some of you, you haven't thrown your stuff away since, I don't know, 1929. I don't know. But there's something about Christmas and things that make you feel like I'm ready for this season. And you know what, then you have those other people that are not just all excited about having their house decorated inside, but then you got those extremists, right? Those extremists like, uh, have you guys ever been to Candy Lane? Candy Lane's pretty awesome. If you've never been to Candy Lane, it's in Sherman Oaks, and literally, I'm not kidding you, the homes there, they deck them out with lights galore. I mean, if you really want to experience Christmas, I remember when my kids were little, um, we'd be in our little Toyota Camry, and I had a sunroof, and the kids would come out from the sunroof standing up, and we'd be driving through all Candy Lane, and they'd be like, Dad, do it again, and we'd be there for about hours just driving in circles. Why? Because when we weren't feeling it, we had to go somewhere to see it, and when you see it, you feel it, right? And so uh, people go extreme. I'm sure in some of your neighborhoods, man, they just light up their home. For example, let me show you a picture of one of them. Like, dang, that's legit right there. Yeah, that looks more like a temple, huh? Yeah, it looks, that's crazy. And so, you know, people are like, whoa. And when you light your stuff up like that, people, they come to your pad. They come check it out. They want to looky-loo and see what in the world is that. Look at this other one. How about this one? Man. That's like, wow. I mean, that's legit. And now I'm seeing more and more homes that have animations. And I'm just like, wow. You just, you're just in awe. You're just like, wow. An animation on a home, and it just looks like it's real. Look at this one. How about this one? Come on, look at that. That's the North Pole right there. <laughs> Happy holidays, right? I mean, that's, it may be too much, but damn, people like it. <laughs> look at this one. Look at this one. Oh, holy bright. You know, there's holy moly and then there's holy bright, right? And so this local family wins the light contest. How about that? This person won the light contest. And then there's those other kind of people. Look at this one. They're just like ditto, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, gotcha, man. Ditto, whatever you said, that's what I do. And so we all, we all have... We all have this moment where, where we're reminded every Christmas as we bust out the ornaments, the lights, there's something sentimental that happens as you're preparing to celebrate Christmas. But let me tell you something. God was the same way since the beginning. Look at John chapter 1 verse 1 through 5. Look at this. Please stay with me. Stay with me, okay? Because today you're going to learn different. You're going to learn new. You're not going to look at Christmas the same way today. Everybody say, in the beginning. beginning. Come on, we all had that beginning, right? In the beginning, God was preparing for his Christmas. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was already there, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, 
He was with God. So in other words, he's saying Jesus was with God. So here's God, Frank, stand up here. Here's God, and Jesus was with God since the beginning. And so they're hanging out. And then all things were made through him, and nothing that has been made was made without him. How many know that Jesus is the word of God? He is the word. He is the word, and the word has been, so God was about to prepare the greatest Christmas experience, and he busted out his greatest sentimental ornament, light, and he said, this is going to be a lit Christmas. It's going to be lit, and look what he says. Verse 4, life was in him and that life was the light for all people i don't know about you but there are so many people right now looking for life looking for life there are people right now that you know that i know maybe it's someone sitting in this room right now you're looking for life Maybe you feel like, man, I'm, I'm dead. I don't feel alive. I, I, I don't feel like I'm even here. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, I feel like, like I'm just an invisible person just walking through the earth while everyone else is living, and I just feel, I feel empty. I, I, I feel lonely. Uh, I, everyone's shopping, and I see trees on vehicles, and, and I look at it, and I'm thinking like, uh, someone pinch me. Is this even real right now? And the life was in him. And that life was light. For who? For all people. Stay with me. Look what it says. The light shines where? In the darkness. The light shines where? The light shines in the dark. Look how much God loves. He loves you so much and me and every single person on earth that his light shines in the darkest season of your life. He, lo- that's where he, he loves to hang out where there's darkness. You know why? Look at this verse. But the darkness has not overcome the what? Another version of the Bible, same verse, in the original version, it says, and darkness cannot comprehend the light. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you just felt like you were walking in darkness? And you couldn't comprehend, why am I feeling this way? Have you ever felt where where you're in this place where you're just constantly walking, you know the bills are paid, everything's fine, but there's like this oppression. You wake up and you're sad, and, and you just feel like you feel empty. You just feel like, like I, don't, I, I can't even explain it. Like if you were to ask a person that's going through something, and, and, uh, and, and, and you're like, what's wrong with you? And, and they say, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just, I just don't feel, I don't feel jolly i don't feel christmas i you know there's something to say about this darkness stay with me because many times when you and i read the bible and we read the word darkness i think most of us we immediately interpret the word darkness as just one definition let me give you the first definition of darkness scripturally it's evil everybody say evil So there's a darkness called evil, and evil brings violence, injustice, destruction, depression, bottomless grief. And so the person with depression is not evil. The one who created the depression is evil, and his name is Satan. He is the father of darkness, while God is the father of light. So there is an evil darkness that that people live in every single day, but then there's another kind of darkness. Then there's the ignorance darkness. And the ignorance darkness that people are in, which like I said, could be someone sitting in this room today, you're just not knowing how to cure evil. So you're in this dark place, 
and you just don't know why. Let me tell you, that's ignorance. It's not that you're dumb, you're stupid. It's, it's the enemy is very crafty and he knows how to bring us to a place of ignorance where even us who have maybe been walking with God for, for maybe five years, 10 years, 15 years and you don't know how to get out of your stuff. Have you ever said that? I don't know how to get out of this. However, you've been working, walking with God for, for X amount of time. You've seen him do miracle signs and wonders but you hit a place in your life where you feel like I can't get out of this. That's darkness. It's darkness. And we have all been in darkness. The first year I started this, this church, I fell into depression. That, what came in was darkness. And most people are like, oh my God. Listen, we live in a world that is dark. That's why God in the beginning was the word. So in other words, was the word. God saying, my son was the word and that word became human on this earth. And this, and this human named Jesus who lived amongst us, who was tempted in every possible way like you and I are, yet he was without sin, who experienced and saw every bit of sorrow and grief and depression, yet overcame every situation. I believe that there are people right now, good, good Christians, good people, that really, they genuinely love God, but they don't even, they're even ignorant that they're in darkness right now as we speak. Does that make me evil? No, it just makes you ignorant. That's it. When you don't know how to get out, it's ignorance not knowing what the cure for evil is. But the cure, God gave it to us. He said, in him was life and the life was the light this christmas we need to seek light again light do you remember when they were looking where the 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 newborn would be delivered and they said follow the what light it was a dark night no one knew where everybody wanted to see him And all they said was, follow the light. And as you follow the light, you will find him. This Christmas, let's follow the light again. And realize that God was preparing the greatest Christmas service, the greatest Christmas experience for us since the beginning. And right now, You and I, we are his ornament once again being brought out in this season. And God's saying, I want to display you like nobody's business. So that when people see you that are in darkness, they won't comprehend it. But light is going to overcome their darkness. Are we here this morning? Are we still thinking about going shopping right now? (laughs) Got to get that gift. Thanks, Pastor, for reminding me. No, darkness, <laughs> you're in darkness. And we've all been there, guys. But you know what? Today the Christian church is afraid to say, yeah, I've been depressed. Oh, I know it's right. Because religious people say, you don't have enough faith to get out of depression. Well, last time I checked, yes, faith is what keeps me in the place of belief But light is the only one that can remove the darkness from my life. He's the only one. What am I saying? Let me tell you something. Just because the pictures you saw with these homes that were lit doesn't mean that everybody does it, right? My house isn't lit right now, physically speaking, my house. I'm not doing any of that. I used to do that. And uh, don't do it anymore because the kids are all growing up. They don't bug me anymore. But how many know that you can be a believer but not be light? Yeah. I believe in God. That's why we do Christmas. But God says, I don't want you just to believe. I want you to be light. 
I need you to be light. God didn't put his son on a cross and display him the way he did, being ripped and tortured and take every sin, your sin, my sin upon himself so that we can just be quiet and shy back about our faith so that we can put our light under the bed when it needs to be on top of a platform. And what's your platform? Your platform is where you work right now. Your platform is where you live right now. Your platform is whatever shopping mall you're going to. That is your platform. Wherever you go, light shines and darkness cannot comprehend it, but it overcomes the darkness that people are going through right now. I want us to please understand this, that Christmas was all about God sending Christ light this season. The whole story of Christmas, somebody turn off your phone. That's you. You know who you are. Just turn it off. You're in darkness. <laughs> so, so, so if this is true, then I have to be aware of the influences that are maybe right now causing my life to be in a place of oppression, depression. I think so many times, if not careful, we identify our life based on our sin or we identify our life based on depression, addiction, abuse. You see, God said, I need you to not just to be a believer, but to be light. Light will overcome every bit of darkness in your life and my life. Light. We need this light. Come on, look at two or three people and say, you are the light of this world. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Is your light on this Christmas? Come on. Are you even lit this Christmas? Does this world even know if you're home? It's funny how we're good interpreters when we go visit our family and friends. If the lights are off, they ain't home. If the lights are on, they're home. We go knock on the door. Is your light on this Christmas? Are people in awe of the light in you? Because it's possible. As you're walking through the mall right now, people should see a presence in you and be in awe of like, wow, there's something, there's something different, something unique about you. There's something peculiar about you. I think that's your phone. No, someone's phone. Please check your phone. Someone just phone just keeps ringing and binging and everything. So turn that off before I go turn it off myself. <laughs> you can see up some darkness up in this place right now. <laughs> But, but listen, but what, 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 listen, if not you, then who? Why, why, why are we preaching this? Be, because Satan is also a who. He, he, listen, he's a mimicker of heaven. He mimics what God does. He copies the same model. Satan is not an originator. He's a copycat, but he twists it. And so what does he do? He consumes people with darkness. And we, what, what do we do? When he consumes people with darkness, if not you, then who? Then I become the who that comes with light, and then darkness can't comprehend it, and, and darkness must leave. It, God gave you, Satan has power, but God has all power. And it's understanding that God has anointed you, that God has appointed you, that God has put light in you to make a difference in someone's life this season. In the beginning was the word. This is the season where you're saying, man, this is the perfect time for me to reach the, the brokenhearted. This is the time for me to reach not just unsaved people, but also Christians. There are good Christians right now that are just whack right now. But God still loves them. God's not mad at them. And I think what happens is, you know what darkness does? It brings delusion. It brings oppression. It brings guilt, shame, condemnation. It keeps People that have known God at one point far away from God because they don't feel good enough. They don't feel worthy enough. They don't feel they deserve it. And that is darkness. When you don't feel that you deserve God's grace and God's mercy and God's forgiveness, you're consumed with darkness. 
when you don't feel that, that God can or will forgive you for whatever it is that you've been in, that is being consumed with darkness. And so God wants to set people free this Christmas. Yes, that's a good hand clap. He wants to set people free. He really does. That was his purpose. That was God's intention. You think we started Christmas? No, God started Christmas. And the tree. Jesus died on a tree. Not two blocks. On a tree. And he displayed his tree. And he said, your sins upon that tree. And his blood was shed for you and me. And so, um, as I was studying, I'm like, okay, God. Because I know people can be very uh, religious in their hearing. I'm like, God, what angle can I bring it to get them to really receive it? And, and it's interesting because I, I, I saw this in the scriptures. And, and I've read this verse about this man many times, but I never saw it the way I see it now. There's a man in the Bible named Simon, okay? But there's this guy named Philip. Philip wasn't even a part of the tribe of Jesus, meaning like he was in the core group. He wasn't a, a disciple of the 12, okay? He was just some ordinary dude who witnessed what these disciples were doing. Philip was just a guy that was watching from afar, saw some light and said, whoa. And then he comes to, to faith and he comes to believe in Christ. But all of a sudden now, the life that was in him was now light in him. And so you know what he does? Philip starts writing a list. He starts making a list. He reads it twice, whether the people were naughty or nice, and he said, now let's bring them some light. We need to make a list this Christmas, and it doesn't matter if they're naughty or nice. Look at it twice and bring them to light. We got to do this. And so Philip is just a regular guy and I brought, I'm bringing him because I think the problem with so many Christians is they feel like they're underqualified or not qualified at all to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so Philip sees this dude named Simon. And Simon was someone that was very, uh, very influential. He was being influenced by darkness. Not just, not just any darkness. It wasn't ignorance darkness. Man, it was evil darkness. He was practicing evil but then Philip sees this man, and he sees the potential. When was the last time you saw the potential in someone coming to Jesus in your sphere of influence? Because so many times we are intimidated by people's status quo. Therefore, we won't share our faith because we've already made the assumption, oh, they already know God. Or, man, I can't pray for them for their money. Dang, they pay their bills every month. I'm... I'm barely making it. But Philip, Philip let no, no one's status quo intimidate him from preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, Philip was just walking like, oh, I believe this. Ooh, he didn't care where you came from. All he cared about it was, it was where you're going. And, and so as you hear this story we're about to read right now, please, this is not a bedtime story. This is the truth. And the truth will make you free, but it will it'll also inspire you and empower you and encourage you to do something different this Christmas. Like for real. Are you all ready? Okay, go with me real quick. Go to Acts, the book of Acts. You know, there's this, uh, this one season in Christmas. It was, it was hilarious, but I was like tripping out. Um. It was Christmas time, and this old lady, uh, her husband had passed away, and she had been living alone. And uh, and at night, these 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 guys, these robbers, were 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 jacking things from the whole neighborhood. And this old lady, she's home alone, she's living there, and and these dudes break in while she's sleeping. But they were making so much noise. The old lady wakes up, and this woman. She was a believer of Jesus Christ. She loved God. And she gets up. You know, most of us, man, we'd probably go grab a bat, a knife, a shank or something, right? Or jump out the window and go, and, and go call 911. Not her. This old lady, 
man, she walks up to the guys and she starts being that, that, that faithful, fearless Christian. And she starts saying, Acts 2.38, in the name of Jesus. And, and, and the guys, they freeze, they stop, they dropped everything, and they dropped to the ground. And then she called the cops. They came, and they were bewildered because they're just like, okay, these dudes are like, you know, what, six foot something. This little lady, she's about like maybe five foot two. And they're just like, how in the world did she get these guys not to move from the ground? And they asked the guys, what is your, what is your problem? Like, dude, you could have got away. She's a little, what did you do? Well, you know, officer, she said that she had uh, uh, two acts and a 38. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a cheesy joke, but we're going to go keep reading, okay? So Acts chapter 8. <laughs> That wasn't a true story. I'm lying. <laughs> a little bit of darkness came in right now. Someone's already Googling it while I'm speaking, huh? Okay, Acts chapter 8. So check this out. So a man named Simon lived in the city. Listen. For quite a while, he had practiced. He practiced what? Evil, Evil magic. Where did he practice it at? In the city. See, right now, you and I, we're practicing something in our city. For quite a while, he had practiced evil magic there. He amazed all the people of Samaria. Come on, he was lit. Everybody was coming to him and be like, wow. And he claimed to be someone great. Wow, talk about pride, right? I mean, Simon's like, yo, I'm the great. I'm the great. He proclaimed. He said, yeah, come on. Come over here. Man, I wonder if the church would have that kind of confidence. You see, you don't have to be prideful to have confidence. You can have humility and be very secure and confident in God. But this guy is secure in his insecurity. And so, look, he says he claimed to be someone great, and all the people listened to him. From the least important of them to the most important of them. You see how Satan just twists everything? God wants you to have influence uh, uh, with people that are the least important to the most important people. Don't get weird on me now, like, well, isn't everybody important? Yes, but we're talking about influence. We're talking about people of influence, the kind of influence that we connect with. And so... They exclaim, now, so, so the people are listening to this guy named Simon, and they're following, they're listening, and they're following Simon. What did Jesus say? Follow me, and I'll make you what? Fishers of men. Do you see how Satan also has followers? Oh, yeah. He's got followers, too. And he says, and so the people exclaim, it is right to call this man the great power of God. Darkness can get you so consumed that you think you're God now. Sin can get you so consumed that you think you're God now. The enemy comes in with darkness and we become delusional. We become confused right is wrong and wrong is right. What I used to run from, I now run to. What I used to say no to, now I say yes to. It's darkness. quiet up in this Catholic church. <laughs> and so the people are so consumed with this dude, and they're like, it's right to call him the power of God. He was so consumed with darkness that he said, I am God. I am God. Pride will, will make you your own God. Arrogance will make you your own God. Depression will make you your own God. Now listen to me. We all deal with depression. 
But when you grip depression and you just cuddle with depression, you're making a, a personal decision to say, my depression is more powerful than my God. Now, I say get help, get around some people, get some therapy with some good Christian people, and get a process going. But let's just, let's just talk about the darkness of depression. Let's talk about the darkness of confusion and delusion. Let's talk about the darkness of anger and all these things. All that is darkness, man. It just comes in, and it literally shuts the lights off in your life. And then the life of God is no longer in us. This is, the, this is the season where we get to have life and people see the life in you and then that light breaks forth and then we start seeing some miraculous healings. So Simon sees this guy and he sees the potential. Simon is evil, man. He's doing some really bad stuff. He's so consumed in his own image. His identity is pride. And he even knows it. And now he's got some followers. But check this out. And he amazed them for what? A long time. With his what? Evil magic. So they followed him. Wow. I, including you, have all came out of darkness. And I remember... Because it was Christmas that I came to know Jesus. And I was wrapped with anger, lust, rage. I, 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 was, I was confused. I was violent. But then light, a person light came forth and and my darkness cannot comprehend it. And, and I started identifying myself so much that my anger became my name, Temper. How about that? A nickname, Temper. Don't call me Mauricio. My name's Temper. Darkness will give you an identity just like the world wide web will too. This world is giving everyone a profile. This world is under the spirit of darkness. Please stay with me. Think about it. You know what? We all love shopping. I, I'm not against shopping or against the, the, the internet. I think, man, use the internet for God's holy purposes and let's go ahead and do something amazing. But have you noticed that when you buy something from Amazon and then you're on your social media and then you start seeing on social media like something similar to what you bought. You're like, oh, wow, isn't that cool? No, they profiled you. You see, what they do is whatever you're searching for, they profile based on what you search for. And then they start creating this identity regarding you. And then anything that you have under social media or anytime you open up your browser on the internet, you'll always have pop-ups. And these pop-ups are not just accidental pop-ups, they're intentional pop-ups because they know what you constantly look at. You see, this Christmas, if we're going to come out of darkness, then we need to start seeking light again. Because once you seek light, light will give you a profile called now you are set free. Because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And so, so many times, whatever you're looking, you can be looking at porn, and guess what's going to pop up? Think about it. Go to your social media today and start looking at all the ads. They're profiled on what you like. See, Satan knows that if I can just give you temporary pleasure, you'll have a long life time of misery that's the price for pleasure come on Christmas is about light maybe you haven't been the greatest light change 
Seek light again. So Philip is watching this good. He sees the potential in him. He says, man, I can see how God gifted him with, with, with discernment and, and, and being able to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I can see how Satan came and twisted the gift and now he's using it for darkness. And God says, see, the gifts and the talents I placed in you, they were always defined and created for my purposes but then Satan comes in and then he twists it and then he uses it for his purposes and 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 Philip's like we're gonna we're gonna turn this baby around and so he starts seeing the potential that 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 Simon has and he's wanting to bring him out of destruction and he starts profiling him and, and I bet Philip started seeing you know what I bet you this guy is going to come to Christ he's going to come to God and he's going to have this amazing testimony that man people are going to be like wow dude this isn't that the same sorcerer that used to come and read my palm isn't that the same sorcerer that used to throw out the tarot cards isn't that the same sorcerer that used to proclaim that he is God and now he's following Light, Jesus. Look at this. This is awesome. Acts 8, verse 12 through 13. Let's keep reading. Philip preaches the good news. And Simon realizes that though he thought he had it all, he was empty. And look, but Philip. Let's say, but Philip. So you got Simon the Great, and then you just got but Philip. Isn't that cool? Simon the Great. But Philip, but Philip announced the good news of God's kingdom and the name of Jesus Christ. So men and women believed and they were baptized. And Simon said, Simon himself also believed and he was baptized. And then you know what he did? He followed Philip everywhere. And he was amazed. Come on. He thought that he was lit until he saw Philip. And he was amazed. I mean, think about it. Go to Candy Cane. You'll be amazed of the lights. But this is not the same amazed at the awesomeness and amazingness of my awesome God. And he was amazed. Like, wow, look. It says, and he was amazed by the great. Everybody say, by the great. See, he realized that he wasn't the great. There was something that was, someone that was so much higher, higher than him. He says, he was amazed by the great signs and miracles that he saw. Simon was hiding behind his own image but light. God wants to bring us out of our own image this Christmas. What are you identifying yourself with right now? Maybe you're identifying yourself as a not so good of a Christian. That's the wrong identity. Maybe you're identifying yourself as a horrible parent. That's not your identity. Maybe you're identifying yourself with your circumstance. That's not your identity. And if you're not careful, whatever you're identifying with, you will hide behind it like a mask. The apostle Paul hid behind his own mask. And guess what? On the road to Damascus, God demasked him. God wants to demask people this Christmas and shed his awesome light because there's life in him there's life in him (laughs) Simon liked the power but now he learned holy power and there's more to the story but I'm not going to get into it it brings me to a story let me read this real quick. In Isaiah verse 9-2. Now, Isaiah verse 9-2, I want you to understand something. The, the man Isaiah was a prophet. And, and he got a personal revelation of the light that was to come 700 years before Christmas. 700 years. And he gets this revelation of the light that would come and break forth in the darkness of this earth. And it says in Isaiah 9, 2, and the people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. I'm telling you right now, if you're living in darkness right now, man, the light is about to break forth before this service ends in your life. 
If you know people right now in your workplace, stop assuming that everyone's good. Let me tell you something. When you don't have God, no one's good. And the light of God is coming through you and through me. And he says, and they are now living in a very dark, what? Land. But a light will shine on them. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.